Fire! And welcome to another Weeding Wednesday. It's your girl, Logan, who reads, because it's such a talent to have, such a skill. Today I am going to be reviewing Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripor. Not sure if I said that right, probably didn't. I said I read, I didn't say I did it well. So anyway, Black Buck. <sighs> I'll be honest, I did not really enjoy it. I gave it, I'm not gonna get into that, but I, I did not really enjoy this. Anyway, let's start with just, uh, also if you'd notice, I just wanna, my sister's cat, I don't know if you can see, but he chewed on it, he was chewing on it. He knew before me, he knew that it wasn't gonna be good. He knew it was not gonna be something I enjoyed. I should have listened. I should have learned, I should have keyed in that this little kitten knew something I didn't. But I gave it a chance anyway. And uh, first let's just, let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. We're gonna read the little inside cover, what made me pick it up. Also, it was like really, I felt like a lot of people were looking forward to it also. It's like satire of the, like the startup world. So, and it's a, from a black, <laughs> is he black? He's black, I don't know. He's, he's not white, okay? It's from a dude who's not white. And so people were really looking forward to this. It was hyped up, I thought. I was like, let me just see if it's worth all this hype. Here we go. For fans of Sorry to Bother You and The Wolf of Wall Street, a blazing satirical debut novel about a young man given a shot at stardom as the lone black salesman at a mysterious cult-like and wildly successful startup where nothing is as it seems. In an unambitious 22-year-old, Darren lives in a bedside brownstone with his mother, who wants nothing more than to see him live up to his potential as a valedictorian of Bronx science. But Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of a midtown office building, hanging out with his girlfriend, Soraya, and eating his mother's home-cooked meals. All that changes when a chance encounter with Rhett Daniels, a silver-tongued CEO of someone in NYC's hottest tech startup, results in an exclusive invitation for Darren to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor. After enduring a hell week of training, Darren, the only black person in the company, reimagines himself as Buck, a ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. But when things turn tragic at home and Buck feels he's hit rock bottom, he begins to hatch a plan to help young people of color infiltrate America's sales force, setting off a chain of events that forever changes the game. But Black Buck is a hilarious, razor-sharp skewering of America's workforce. It is a compulsive, crackling debut that explores ambition and race and makes way for a necessary new vision of the American dream. No, it doesn't. Anyway, we're gonna start with the pros. So we're gonna get off, you know, we're gonna, there's two, there's two pros I found, I was able to say, okay? Number one is the voice. I love how Buck sounds, honestly. Um, we're just gonna call him Buck. Like his name is Darren, but we're just gonna call him Buck for this whole video, I don't care. Um, and I like how Ascari, I'm just gonna call, I'm gonna shorten the dude's name to Ascari. I'm not gonna say Mateo, because I feel like that's too personal and I don't really like this guy. So we're gonna say Ascari, okay? I like how Ascari writes him too. And I thought that like it takes place in New York and the love he has for New York feels like palpable. Like I was like, it doesn't make me want to go there. It doesn't make me want to go to New York and live there. Cause I just, I don't know. I've never, maybe when I was younger, I wanted to, but like now I'm just like, no, it doesn't seem like a fun place. It seems like a kind of depressing place to live, honestly. I don't want to be there, okay? Um, but it felt very real. He's like, it was like, oh, he's, I can tell this dude loves New York, so that's great for him, you know? And this, like his voice, he sounded like a black guy, so that was cool. So, <laughs> sounded like a real black dude, so that was nice. Um, and a young black guy. Uh, the pacing uh, is another, is the second pro I have. And it's gonna wrap us up in the pros, honestly. The pacing, the story moves pretty quickly. Like, I think, you hardly really get any before of like before his normal life working at the Starbucks like he goes he doesn't even go one day at Starbucks I think maybe like because like the dude walks in and then he tries to sell change his drink from a cold brew to like a vanilla sweet cream cold foam cold brew and the dude's name is Rhett like the guy from Gone with the Wind anyway so yeah, the, the story moves pretty quickly, and that's the last of the, the pros I have. The voice and the pacing was nice, and that's it. 
that's all I got. That's the only positive things I have to say. And I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I, I pulled them out of just, I had to search. I searched a little bit to give you two. Because I didn't just want to trash this book completely. I kind of, I was like, it had to have done something well. And honestly, the voice was pretty good because, I mean, the book itself wasn't, how it was told wasn't bad. I just ended up not liking the story in general and, like, the artistic choices we made. But the way it was told was fine. That was great. I think he's a good writer. I just was like, this is, how, this is what you did, though, with your brain. Like, you chose to make this story. That's when I, that's the problems I have. So... Here's my biggest problem with Black Buck, which I think um, I saw this before I even read it because I saw Read with Cindy's review of the book, which I kind of regret seeing because I think it kind of colored my my uh, feelings when I read it. But she said that all the co all the female characters only exist to like serve the main character and push him forward in the story. Um, and then I read it and I was like, oh, let's see if she's right. And she was. She unfortunately was. Like, <laughs> not that I wish she was like, but I do wish she was wrong because I wish it wasn't that way. I wish the female characters didn't come off that way, but they really do. They really, really do. Um, it's, it's upsetting. Oh, so female characters and like the underlying misogyny, okay? Because listen, every single female character in this book is like they they're the same because their dominant quality is being submissive and even more so subservient like nothing's wrong with being a submissive person nothing's wrong with that but subservient is like where they just no matter what they were putting buck first in their lives like his girlfriend soraya and then his mom and then like well that's pretty much it they're like the pretty much like the only real um female characters that matter i think and they just always were kissing his butt and just putting him forward ahead of themselves and it just it's bad insult to injury for me buck was like a bum and a half so I was, <laughs> like he's a bum and a half so i was like why are we doing this so why are we doing so much for this man he better look like chris evans if he look like if we are doing this much for him and even then i ain't doing all that for chris evans i ain't doing it okay so it was just very upsetting to me because they were just it was like just disappointing. I think even when they were mad, they weren't really angry, you know? It was like almost they were angry because the story called for them to be, and they were always ready to forgive him too. And it was just upset, no matter what he did, honestly. It's like this this dude could have pulled out a Glock and shot a puppy, and they would have been like, oh my God, Buck, apologize. <laughs> then they would have been like, Okay, fine. He was just having a bad day. That is our butt. That's our Darren. Yeah, we love him. You know, it just doesn't make sense. And then this is another thing I noticed. There is only one female character who who does not fit with the rest. And it's a black girl who shows up in the end, near the end, kind of, um, after the halfway mark, at least. She's written like a man, as in, you know, a person with feelings and goals that they put forth ahead of others because that's what humans typically do, okay? She's written like a person. She's written like, you know, I care about what I care about, and that doesn't matter about you, Buck. Like, I don't care about you, okay? Because I just met you, frankly. She's treated like that and written like a normal person or a man, as Oscari is only able to write. And uh, she's like, co coincidentally, she's the only character who's not seen as attractive. Every other female character even if they are a side character, even if they are only mentioned once, they are put in a lens where they are seen as attractive to the main character, to Buck. He like talk comments about how pretty they are no matter what, okay? He always says that. It's just something he states. Like you can't look as if he can't look at a woman and not text, you know, say how aesthetically cruising she is. So this one, she's the one person that he's not attracted to. And it's like, just so happens that she's also the one woman who's not subservient and submissive as her dominant qualities, okay? She, if anything, he even calls her a little sister. It's more like a little sister relationship, which just gives this underlying, I'm, I think it's like, it's, it's not intentional. I think it's an unintentional thing that he can only be attracted to subservient women who will kiss his butt and after wiping it for him, okay? That's all I'm saying. And I, that... Mm, that underlying message that I got from the book 
was like really gross and just I, I didn't like it it makes me hate it honestly I was like no that is nasty no thank you okay so um yeah that's what that's my major con with the book okay and then I got a scroll on this I got the list written out and then that leads to my second thing so I called Buck a bum and a half, and I mean that. He's a bum and a half. It is not two and a half men, and it's two and a half bums, and it's all, it's just starring him, okay? He is underwhelming to me. He was an underwhelming main character, and I was like, constantly in the book, people are telling him, like, oh, you're in, like, they, all the women, they believe in him so much. Like, his mom is like, he was valedictorian at that school, and ever, and then he worked at Starbucks, and everyone's like, oh my god, why? Like, oh my god, you have so much potential, da 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 da, like, you could do so much, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I didn't really see that. I'm like, no, seems like he should be making coffee. I made coffee for a long time. I've worked at Starbucks for a year, at least. It's a, it's like a, it's a good job. Nothing's wrong with working at Starbucks. And I've shown no, I've seen nothing of Buck, the fictional character that made me believe that he's better than a Starbucks, honestly. So <laughs> I was just like, all the characters, everyone was saying like, oh, you're gonna be somebody, man. You gonna be somebody. And it was like, you can, I mean, nah. Cause I just never was shown any of the contrary. I was like, what really makes him special though? We're not shown that he's really smart in any way. Okay, it's just, he's, he doesn't seem, we don't say that he's, like, he's kind of attractive, but we're not saying that he's where it's obviously attractive, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, what makes you special? What makes you have all this potential that everyone else clearly sees, but I cannot? It just didn't make sense to me. It just felt like the author ran with this character and likes you, so he gave you all this plot that benefits you, and I don't understand it. I don't get that. So yeah i did not like buck i was like i don't give a crap what happens to this dude anyway and the uh third con i have is toxic masculinity that i or the toxic masculine traits i sell and this only happened this was weird honestly as i was reading i was i was just like baffled by this and it's kind of near the halfway mark of the book because there's this this beef he had with his uh childhood friend named jason he beats up jason okay sucker punches him for one what's the point of beating up anybody if you're gonna sucker punch them like you don't even get the like the if you you had to jump them essentially to even win the fight then i'm not gonna feel any pride after that fight okay i'm just saying like i want to come at you with you 100 percent knowing i'm about to whoop your behind okay and then even with you 100 percent knowing that information you still lost because i'm better than you you know what i'm saying that's the kind of pride i want to have with my bruised knuckles and my you know my limp or whatever but you beat him up because you ju you jumped him you sucker punched him that's the only reason you won like i'm just saying i wouldn't be satisfied after that i wouldn't be satisfied what's that doing for you anyway I'm just saying you did violence wrong that that violence is ever the answer but how you did it wrong okay but he beats up Jason, his childhood friend in the story, because he talks bad about him on TV or whatever. And then after that, I just noticed an increasing like pattern of no matter what emotional, emotional thing he was going through, he reacted violently. Like I was, I watched this dude like throw a tantrum, I don't know how many times, at least three, okay? Where I was just like, why are we reacting violently? Or why is that our only possible reaction i mean i'm not it's not even the things that like you should be angry about like things you shouldn't you you shouldn't be mad like if you're sad right now then why is a toaster on the floor like i don't understand it anymore it didn't make sense and it was like it was just so upsetting to me and that was a trend in the book that i was not a fan of okay so um and then as well with the, I'm not even getting into the real story of Black Buck, by the way. I just realized this. I'm kind of just going through, but I don't really feel like getting into the story either because it's mostly just craziness, okay? Because he goes to the startup fund. First of all, it's racist. Little, he's like the only black dude there. He goes through this hell week. Um, a guy named Chris, I think, is like white and racist and just hates him because he's racist, I guess. And, um... I was like, after that, he kind of loses himself a little bit and the company starts going down. He saves it by making a really good deal. 
and then he makes this happy campers thing where it's like a community where you can where they like just they only take people of color and they put them in the startup industry pretty much and they give them a they train them on how to be a salesperson and stuff and that's it um I don't even know how to describe the book like it's just it's it's foolishness I don't really feel like getting into that but um the one thing I was a, that another con I had was there's only one news station in like the whole thing and there's actually a lot of he goes on TV for like like two times and it's the same TV show it's the same news show like wait good morning America and I'm just like I don't know but there's a you know the suspension of disbelief is just too that's too much the for me to believe that there's only one news station and there's only one viewpoint when it comes to any event that happened in the book any event that happened there was only one reaction to it and it was negative and against the main character and i'm like that's just unbelievable that's just incredulous honestly in this world we live in where everyone has an opinion that it would all be the same or that they're only there's only one opinion that gets a voice is ridiculous it's as if this took place in a world where there's like no black twitter there's no black lives matter there's no you know racial um discussion going on in america i mean that's that's what it's like that's what it came off as like and if you told me that's what it was then okay i can go in there and i can i have a reason but if you're just telling me there's just one news show and it's just it calls the startup happy campers racist for trying to diversify the startup industry and that's the only reaction we don't have anyone praising happy campers it's just called racist the whole world just calls it racist i was like that's unbelievable that doesn't even make sense like why do that anyway so that was one thing i was just that bugged me i was like that's stupid but okay um let's see there are so many okay and lastly this is the last uh con i had was the freaking ending the ending made me mad because okay he ends up in jail it's a spoiler i'm sorry spoiler alert he ends up in jail the main character he goes to jail prison for what you ask crack delivering and dealing with crack cocaine that he is framed for like he actually wasn't he was dropping it off for his friend jason who actually was dealing with crack but he goes to jail for him because like the dude chris framed him for it okay chris was the buyer and Chris frames him for dealing drugs. And he goes to prison for eight years. Eight years. And then Soraya still comes to visit him because of course she does, because she's loyal, y'all. She's loyal. And she comes to visit him and they like play role play on the phone like sales. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, you don't, because that, that's what they did though in the book is that they role played a lot of sales. Like he relaxed, like just trying to cold sale someone on something. Could be lotion could be baby oil it doesn't matter but that's what they were doing okay and that's how the book ends and I was just I'm still confused by it because what was the point point? and I'll have you know that this is market this is like from the first page it's kind of telling you that it's a sales manual and from the first page they tell you that um well Oscari tells you there's no such there's nothing like a black man on a mission. That's the first sentence of the author's note, okay? There's nothing like a black man on a mission. But this dude, this particular black man mission ended with him in prison. Okay, and so you say there's nothing like a determination of a black salesperson, which Buck was, and he still ended up in jail. What was the point? I'm just like legit confused. What was the point of that, of him being in jail? Like what was I'm it didn't make any sense in regards to the story to me either for me buck ends up in so many like impossible situations and he always finds his way out of them okay not because he's smart or anything but just because he's in the favor of the author it feels okay so for me it would have made more sense for him to get this drug charge be clearly guilty of it and then prove that he is the best salesperson of all time and that this sales manual really is you know um, the end all be all this is like the Bible of sales because I was convicted I was almost convicted of selling crack cocaine and then sold my way out of that to an innocent verdict from the jury that's how good of a salesperson I am I was okay and that's why you should listen to me I thought that would have made more sense than what I was given 
which is a black man in jail for falsely imprisoned for a crime he did not commit for eight years eight years he bail street he like ah. i'm like no i've already seen if bail street could talk you're not gonna give it to me again i I, I don't know. It was like, what was the point of that? I still am just so confused by that ending. What, was that like the original ending? Like, I have so many questions. <laughs> so I'm just like, it's not effective to me. It's not at all effective. Like, Happy Campers, the start, the little community and platform he created to diversify the startup industry, is still going strong. He did that successfully. But Yo Mahan is rotting in jail for eight years. What was the point? Someone tell me. I'm open to discuss. This is something I would I would like to discuss this book with someone who loved it and someone who liked it. I would love to discuss that book with this book with them because I'm legit like maybe maybe I, I'm not understanding. Maybe something was amiss. I'm not saying like my opinion is the end all be all. Like no, I'm just that I was confused by that ending. I don't know if anyone could ever sway me that it was a smart choice to have him go to jail for, for eight years. I don't know if I could ever buy that, so. That is my review of Black Buck by Matteo Pascaripor. I gave it one star. Oh no. Actually, I gave it two, and then I got angry, and I went back and changed it to a one. <laughs> so I was like, nah, you know what? Nah, it deserves to be a one. It should be a one. And I gave it that. So. Okay. So let's read the review I wrote, like originally, right after finishing the book. Um, so let's see. I started this book really loving Ascari Poor's voice, but over time the main character just got worse and worse. He seemed to become every stereotype of toxic masculinity, and there was a point where it seemed no matter what emotion Buck slash Darren is feeling, he would react violently two question marks um every female character was an object of sexual attraction except rose who wasn't submissive and didn't worship the main character which just rubbed me the wrong way it had the underlying message that the main character buck slash darren can't be attracted to any woman who isn't submissive and kisses his butt after riping it of course so many things didn't make sense with this story to me how there was only one news outlet and only one response to any event in buck's life was being praised and accepted while happy campers was called a terrorist group the plot twist confused me as to what genre as Corey Poor was trying to write, but then again, plot twists don't belong to one genre, so maybe that's just a me thing. I just know there were so many there were so many I was no longer surprised, just tired and bored. Then to have Buck Darren end up in prison. I thought with him writing a sales manual and saying there's no determination like that of a black salesman, he would represent him in court and land the biggest sale of all, convincing a jury he was innocent despite hard evidence. That would have been more in tune with the rest of the novel to me since we kept having Buck slash Darian come out on top in these impossible situations, shaking my head. Uh, P.S. I came back and dropped this from two stars to one because really what did it do for me other than give me toxic masculinity and thinly veiled misogyny but with diversity? So, yeah, that was my review. And now I can show my illustration as well. Um, this is like, I think the immediate thing that came to mind, honestly, uh, when I was reading it. But yeah, so we have the main character here in a little suit and he's locked up as he is at the end of the novel for eight years. And then um, the girl crying on top right there, that's his girlfriend because she comes to visit him and such in prison and stuff. So there she is on top of the prison just crying really sad and stuff. And then I have the quote that, I mean, opens the book. It is in the forward or whatever by the, it's the author's note at the beginning of the thing by Mate Oscar Report. There is, there's nothing like a black salesman on a mission. Mateo Ascari part. And to symbolize that, he put his main character in prison at the end. But he was on a mission, so that makes sense. I don't know. It really doesn't. I don't get it. Like, I, even when, like, civil rights activists in the past have been imprisoned, they were always imprisoned, like, in relation to what their civil, their activism. And Darren goes to prison for cocaine, so make it make sense, you know? <laughs> just, just make it make sense is all but yeah that's my little illustration there um i think i did my job because the only reason she's looking so pathetic up there is just that's how i felt he wrote them he wrote the all the female characters just like incredibly pathetic 
So that's how I pictured that and it angered my sister just while looking at her. So I think I did my job. Um, yeah, and I wanted him to just, I, I kind of liked, I liked a lot how I did his shading and stuff. Like just, I didn't blend anything, just different colors. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing to her, but then I was like, no, nah, she was one dimensional. She's gonna be one dimensional in my picture. So, um, yeah. So that's my little illustration for Black Buck. And that closes out my review, honestly, for Black Buck. One star, really, really did not like it. This really summarizes my feelings. Um, and like my biggest points of just contention with this book, and what I just don't like. Okay, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you come back, join us again for another Reading Wednesday. Go read a book, have some thoughts, or, you know, have a nap and some beautiful dreams. I don't know. Live your life, homie. Live your life. But thank you for watching to the end or whatever. Um, bye. <laughs>